Good morning, this is Margaret Fetty at the University of Sonia at the Taylor Fit, and welcome to Facebook Live. So, I told you guys yesterday about the buttonhole or foot for the uh, burniness, but you know what I thought I would do is, um, some of you may not have watched this yesterday, and so I thought I would just really quickly show you the automatic buttonhole one more time, but today I want to show you the manual buttonhole foot. And this I felt like was really important because a lot of you who, if you don't own a Bernina, you may have a foot very similar to this. Um, the 3A, or excuse me, 3C. This is the 3C foot. And if you look under it, it's got the tunnels for the beads of the buttonhole foot. And you may have something like this for your sewing machine. So I wanted to show you that, um, if we go back over here to our Bernina automatic buttonhole or foot, there is a limit to how big this can sew. And basically it boils down to about an inch and a quarter is about the biggest buttonhole you can make. Well, what if you want to use something like this big button? That is always the trick. How do you make a good buttonhole for something this large? Well, in the past, we probably would have made a bound buttonhole for it, and those are a lot of trouble and a lot of effort, and so I thought, well, wouldn't it be wonderful to show you, you don't necessarily have to do that. You don't necessarily have to use a, you know, do the trouble and the effort of a bound buttonhole. You can actually just make a regular sewn buttonhole like your machine can do, but you're just going to make it bigger. So... First off, we're gonna go ahead and um, I've got this wonderful little copper button with Celtic knot work on it. And this is something we sell here at the shop and I will tell you that most of our buttons are not online. I know, bad Margaret, right? Um, but we're working to get them online slowly but surely. But if you have a project that you would like some sort of button for, all you need to do is say, send us an email or give us a call and say, I'm looking for blue buttons or I'm looking for copper buttons or something. And we can show you what we have. And if that works for you, wonderful. We can get you what you need and we can send them to you. And if it doesn't work out, well, at least you tried. <laughs> so, okay. So this is the button I'm going to do with the automatic button holder because it's small enough. So I'm gonna put this button against my little contraption here, the button holder, the Bernina button holder. And I'm gonna move this little guide back up. And there we go. That, and you know, you should always give a little bit more room than you think you need. So I'm gonna get that back out of there. But basically we're gonna set that there and we're gonna make the button hole that size. I'm gonna set the buttonhole aside. And what I've done right here, first off, let's see what's inside. This is two layers of cotton, but I've also got a piece of interfacing in here. And when we get done with this, it should look nice and pretty like this buttonhole does. We're gonna start the buttonhole right here. And let me show you what I'm gonna do. We're going to put our needle right in the crosshairs there. That's where my needle's gonna go in. So I'm gonna take this back out for a second and point out something. The distance between here and here is five eighths of an inch. If you measure most garments that where they're gonna put their buttonholes, most of them run five eighths of an inch away they start. And they may be horizontal or they may be vertical, but usually the edge to the end of the buttonhole is gonna be five eighths of an inch. So if I've got a long line of vertical buttonholes I'm gonna do, or even if they're horizontal, typically I'll run a straight line all the way down my garment so that I can make sure that I don't get any of these buttonholes in the wrong place. Because sometimes what happens 
if you measure from over here and you take your little ruler and you put it right there, what you find happening sometimes is sometimes you get this one five eighths, sometimes this is three quarters, sometimes the other one's half inch. If you draw a straight line all the way down the edge of whatever you're putting buttonholes in, this could be a duvet cover. It could be a lot of different things. But if you put that straight line, you'll make sure that all the buttonholes look identical. Um, and that's, of course, if you have the automatic button holder that Bernina provides. So we're going to go back into this little spot. I told you the crosshairs of where my needle's going to go into. And I'm going to put that down. I'm going to put my foot down. Now we're going to go and look at the screen for a minute. And on the screen, there's a blinking light where my reverse button is. So what it's telling me is go ahead and sew down this edge and we're gonna make sure we're not going too fast here. So we're gonna sew, I'm gonna press my go button. We're gonna sew down. And when the two red lines meet up, I'm gonna hit the reverse button. And so what's gonna happen is the machine's gonna do its job. When it's done, it stops. And look at that. And that was based on from that red point to this red point. When those two matched up, when this was going along, when they matched up like that, I hit the reverse button. Now, the really wonderful thing is that I can go back here and I can put my foot down in any other spot. I can hit my go button again. And this is usually how I do my buttonholes is I just hit the go button. I don't hit the presser. I don't use my foot control because the machine will just do what it's supposed to if I leave it alone and don't cause it any blocks. So look at that wonderful automatic buttonhole. So, and this one is identical to that one, as you can see. So let's go to using our manual buttonhole though. The manual buttonhole, I'm gonna to have to change a couple things on my machine. For starters, I'm going to tell it I'm gonna use a 3C. So it's gonna change. Now, it still has got the auto on here, which what it's referring to is in this description, I can set the length of my buttonhole if I want to. But we are going to go out of that particular buttonhole and we're gonna go to one that I can do manually. Oops, so let's go back here. We're gonna look at these. And we've got all these different buttonholes. I'm gonna try 52, and it's still doing that. Hmm, you know what? We're just going to, oh, that's what we do. We're gonna put it on manual. And then look at this. It's trying to show me what I need to know that it's going to sew down the front. It's going to stitch a straight stitch. It's going to go across the top. It's going to just do each side of the buttonhole and then the bottom edges, and then it will finish up. So we're going to go to the top of that. Let's see if I remember which one of those. We're gonna just go and page through it again and start at the top. So right now, what it's showing me it's first gonna do is it's gonna go down the left side of the buttonhole and we've already put our marks, the top and the bottom. If you look, I've got that great big buttonhole and I put a mark at the top here and I put a mark at the bottom. Now, the one thing I am gonna change because I can do it on this machine and you may not have the ability on yours, but I'm gonna open up the space in between the two legs of the buttonhole because I know that with this big of a button and the amount of fabric I'm going through, I want this just a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to a 1.0. And if you look on the screen, I'm gonna change it back. Let's go back. And what we'll do is we'll turn the knob and look at this, how this opens up more. So that's really neat. 
And then we're going to go back to this other part. Going to go back to our manual part. And I'm going to also try to make those little legs just a bit bigger. Because this is a really big button. And what I don't want is the buttonhole to be super skinny. I don't want these little, these are called beads. I don't want these super skinny. I want them bigger so that it has, um, it's, I mean, this is a really, you know, substantial button. And if I were doing this on a real garment, I probably wouldn't use white um, or the off-white I'm using right now. What I would probably do is go ahead and switch to a black thread. But for this demonstration, you can see it a lot better with the off-white, right? So again, I'm going to put my needle down. There it is in the middle of my fabric. I'm gonna put my foot down. Now, the one thing I wanna make sure is that I don't cockeye my fabric. So this is straight. And you know, one of the things that I would recommend when you're working on projects, a lot of times we'll have shirts with collars, um, maybe hems on them. And a lot of people do their buttonholes at the very, very end. I'd recommend you wait and, excuse me, not wait, ex that you would, instead of waiting till the end, I would recommend what you do is put your buttonholes in before you put your collar on. Put your buttonholes on before you do the hem. That way there is no bulky parts of your project that your foot could potentially hit and make a bad buttonhole. And uh, that's one of the big problems people run into is that if a buttonhole, especially this big buttonhole, automatic buttonhole foot, look how big that is. Now, if your buttonhole foot is backing up and it hits your collar, imagine it will mess up the buttonhole. So if you can do these things ahead of time before you're going to do that, it really is much nicer. So here we're starting the buttonhole. Now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we hit the reverse button at the right spots. So we're gonna get down to this end. I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. And there we go. We've hit our reverse button. It's gonna go backwards, but we have to hit this reverse button each time. So we're gonna even slow it down more because we don't wanna goof up. And that's why I made these lines right here fairly long so that I can see them. We're gonna even slow down more here. There's no reason I have to go fast. Uh, there we go, we're almost there, I see it. Okay, right at that line, we're gonna go ahead and hit that reverse button again. Now it's waiting for me to tell it to keep on going. Up. Oh. So I had to hit the reverse button each time. So when it went across the top, when it was done with that, I needed to hit the reverse button so that it would know to go ahead and stitch again. So what's gonna happen now is we get down to this bottom edge, we'll have to hit that reverse button again. So I'll slow down the machine again so I make sure I don't miss it. And this is where with your uh, foot control, you can just stitch and stop, and stitch and stop until you get to the exact right spot. So here we are, we're getting really close to that bottom. I'm gonna slow down so that I make sure I don't miss it. This is really looking good. So I'm happy with how wide the stitch beads are. Up oh, there I'm seeing my bottom edge. Now I've got to hit my reverse button right there. It's done it perfectly. It's done. Now how cool is that? Use my cutting of my threads. Look how beautiful that turned out. I, all I need to do is trim off my couple of threads. I can now use my buttonhole chisel and I can cut right here. And this is wide enough that I won't end up with it being um, a problem. But if you compare the, the first ones we did to the second, see how much bigger they are? The second one is bigger. So this is how you can do a manual buttonhole on your Bernina sewing machine. It's so nice. Um, honestly, 
I really haven't come across any machine that does a better buttonhole than a Bernina. And all of you probably know by now, but maybe we have some new viewers. And if we do, hello, how are you? Um, good morning. It's wonderful Saturday here. And I just want you to know that I have sewn professionally my entire adult life. I have had an alteration tailoring business for the last 22 years. Uh, before that, I worked for other alteration shops. So I've had to put in a lot of buttonholes. And frankly, most of the buttonholes um, I've had to do have been really frustrating because they would not come out the same. So I learned a couple of tricks for manual buttonholes that I just showed you. Make sure that you make a good long mark going all the way down the project. Make sure that your ends and beginnings are things that are visible for you. Make sure whatever you're using to mark your fabric isn't going to leave a permanent mark. You won't be happy about that. I always make a sample buttonhole of everything I do out of the exact same fabric and the same interfacing I'm going to use on the garment or on my project. I've done this for lots of purses and bags. I've done it on duvet covers. I've just done it on a lot of things. And so what I can tell you from lots of years of experience, um, I, I really never have used anything that's been more foolproof than my Bernina. So I've been very happy. And you don't have to buy a 790 to get the best buttonhole. Um, the 335 makes just as beautiful buttonhole as my 790 does. It doesn't have the option of opening that area right here that I used on my 790. Um, that happens to be a feature that you can only get once you get into the 5 series or the 7 series, meaning there's 535 and there's a 570 and a 590. Those machines can all do what I just did here with opening that up more. Unfortunately, our lower end machines don't have that ability. Um, but those are something that is really wonderful. And even if you have a different brand of machine, now you know what to look for and see if maybe you can do the same kind of things on your machine. Um, I'm sure that a lot of the more high end on the other models, they have something similar. Uh, one of the unique features though about a Bernina buttonholer versus the, and when we're referring to the automatic buttonhole, this one where I was able to make repeatedly make them the same size, unlike any other brand on the market, Bernina actually measures the distance at the start and the bottom of your buttonhole where most of the other buttonhole functions out on the market appear to count stitches. So we don't count stitches, we count length, and then that way each of these buttonholes come out the same. So it's a really nice feature. Um, so that's all about the buttonholes for today. I have something actually really fun and exciting to share with you today. And that is, we are going to be talking about some of the wonderful kits we have available. So we're going to walk, oh, wait a minute, before we leave, we have to go and look what we have. We have the Solar Flare Quilt Kit by Tool Pink. This is a really beautiful, I have some other Tool Pink things for Tool Pink lovers. Look at this beautiful quilt. It is absolutely gorgeous. It finishes up 60 and a half by 60 and a half, but you know what? I'll bet you're smart enough to add more borders if you want this for a bed quilt. It is really beautiful. We have some of her uh, hexi fabric so that if you want to make more borders around it, we've got some fabrics that will go beautifully with this. So that's really cool. Now, one of the things I was supposed to talk to you about today, and I gooped. And so you're going to have to wait till next week. Um, we are going to be starting in January a block of the month. That block of the month is going to be a Northcott Banyan uh, Batik quilt. And it's a sampler quilt. So there's going to be lots to learn and it's going to be really exciting. So um, we're going to be starting. I'm going to get that all online. And I'm going to get all of the information for you so you know how much it's going to be. And you can do it virtually. The really cool part about this is, is that Denise is going to make the blocks. And then she's going to do a video showing you how to make the blocks. 
just like what we've done with our granny sampler this whole past year. Um, she's not going to stop doing granny sampler until she's done. But in January, we will start this block of the month. Now, you will have to buy the blocks. So there's going to be a cost for that part of it. But we're going to supply you all the fabrics. Um, I'm going to give you the ability to either purchase the whole thing or you can go ahead and just do it month to month if that works in your budget a little bit better. But you do need to commit that you're going to do the whole thing because obviously we can't go and have enough quilt blocks for you know 20 different people and then you decide you're only going to do one of them that won't that will be I, I have to buy all the fabric for this ahead of time so what I need for you guys to think about is next week when we do this I'll have picture of the quit the quilt's going to look like we just got the kit for it so I haven't got everything done yet but I do have a picture of the quilt I'll have prices for you and like I said, you can either break it out monthly or you can pay for the whole thing ahead of time. And so you'll be able to get the entire quilt top for it and you can get binding and sashing and all that kind of stuff. Um, we did, I don't think we decided to get the backing, but if you guys really want me to get the backing, you just have to let me know. So, but you have to let me know now so that I can get it. All right, so what I have over here is all these different quilt kits we just put together. And the one that's probably the most exciting because we told you we were getting it is our dragon quilt. Now, we have had the dragon quilt for uh, some time. In the beginning, fortunately, prints their fabric for a while. A lot of the companies don't do that, but in the beginning does. So as you see this gorgeous quilt, it is here and ready for you. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. You've got this gorgeous dragon. It's in these beautiful colors. And there's going to be a lot of young people who think this is really amazing. This is a wonderful way to introduce a younger person to quilting. If you're a, a potentially someone who maybe wants to teach a granddaughter or a grandson how to sew, and you want to show them about quilting, this would get them excited. Or if you just want to make this as a present for somebody, it is just such a wonderful quilt. I personally love it, but you guys do know that I love my dragons. I do love my dragons. So we have got uh, eight of these quilts available right now, and I should, before we're all said and done, have 10 of them. So I'm going to have, and that once we're done with that group, we're done. We're going to be going to the um, Mudstock Quilters Guild on October the 11th, and we are going to take this with us. We're going to go to the Bloomington Quilters Guild show. We'll be taking this with us. Once these kits are gone, they're gone. So, and they're really reasonably priced. I don't charge you for the pattern. I just charge you for the fabric. And if you look right here, this is all the different fabrics you're gonna get for it. It has everything you need to do the quilt top. So it is, the pattern's gonna come with it for free. All these fabrics are gonna come with it and you are gonna be set and ready to go to make this quilt. And these blocks are not hard. Everything on this quilt is basically construction is all straight edges. You don't have any triangles to deal with and everything, like I said, this is actually a really good quilt that if you wanted to try to bring a teenager in and you wanted to show them how quilting goes together, there's only nine or no, there's not even that many. There's six blocks that you have to piece. The rest of it is all just sashing and doing, it's, it's so much simpler than it looks, but because of the wonderful fabrics in this, it makes it look like it's really complicated. And so if you have a teenager that you were thinking, oh my goodness, they're so hard to do something for, this might be the perfect quilt for you. And again, there's only gonna be these 10, and once they're gone, they're gone. Now, what's even crazier is, the unicorn quilt. Well, we showed you the, the unicorn quilt. Um, we showed you the top all put together a couple weeks ago. And this is what that quilt looked like. 
and I'm having it quilted right now or else I would show it to you. And again, this the blocks for this, now this is a little more complicated. It does have triangles. So it's a little more complicated, but again, there's only six blocks you have to actually piece. And on the corners, unlike the dragons, you don't even have to miter this. So that's so simple. It's nice. It's got beautiful sashing. It's gorgeous. I can see some young lady really enjoying this, or maybe you like unicorns. So guess what? When I went, this is the funniest thing. I went and bought some more of our unicorn stripe fabric because we ran out of it. And I thought, oh, well, this is great. I'll have enough to do about six more unicorn quilts. And before I even got the fabric in, we sold three of our panels. So we are actually down to three unicorn kits. And we have three pillow kits. So what I did was we took our striped fabric for the unicorns and we went ahead and I'm not going to be able to show you that because it is, hold on, I think I can take it right here. Ah, so there's this really wonderful striped fabric and what we did was we cut you strips of the striped fabric so that you could put it on the top of the pillowcase. And then on the back, the bottom part of the pillowcase, it's going to have this really pretty fabric for the base of the pillowcase. So there will be a strip of unicorns, and then the pillowcase will be out of this. So we have three of these pillowcases, enough to make two pillowcases. Again, the perfect project for your teenager. And then you can make them the quilt. So this is really beautiful you're going to be able to go ahead and make them a really gorgeous quilt. It's extremely reasonable. Um, it's a nice size if you want to. Of course, you can always add more strips around the outside edge to make them bigger. Um, but it is a really, really pretty quilt. And we have these ready for you. The unicorn quilt is only $128 for its kit. The pillow kits are only $24. The dragon quilt kit, it's only $135. But then, maybe these are a little too old for your grandkids. We have this absolutely adorable Dinosaur Friends fabric. And if you look at this, these are really bright and happy. And the dinosaurs aren't scary. <laughs> so I love this dinosaur fabric it's so precious and here is the quilt for it again it's not difficult to do it's really simple but we only have a couple of these pad um, kits left and when that one's gone it's done we're not going to get any more of it and these kits are only let me see if I can find a price here guys $108. But again, it's a full bed size one, so you are going to have a wonderful kit for that. Now, we have some other decorative kinds of things that maybe it's more suitable for your home or somebody you want to make a present for or maybe a gift. So, we have the Metropolis 2 pattern from our City Lights from Northcott, and we are almost out of this stuff. Um, so we've got the panel and then the fabrics to go around it. And what this one is though, is instead of having this blue backing, it's going to have this rust backing. And we have the fabric for that. And this kit is ready to go and it is only $106. So that one's ready to go. How about the Venice line? A lot of you have come in and you have really enjoyed the Venice line. This is in the blues and purples, and here is the pattern. And the most difficult part about this are our circles. And I've got a couple of tips for you on doing circles when you're appliquing. Um, the idea here is that you want those circles to come out really pretty, right? So one of the things you can do to do applique circles to make them look really nice is actually take a circle and face it. 
What I mean by that is make two circles, draw your line as to where you're gonna sew on the actual line of the circle. So this actual circle dimension, stitch around that and in the back of that two layers, the, but the wrong side of it, just cut a little slit, turn them inside out, clip your corners and press it really well. And then you can just straight stitch it right onto your quilt and you're done and it's simple. So that's one really easy way to do that. And if you guys want, I can even demonstrate that next week because it's such a simple way to get hard shapes that are difficult to go and get beautiful angles and so forth. A circle is so difficult to sew really well. And if you do what I just suggested there, you will find that you're gonna get really beautiful circles and then you don't have to worry about stitching them just perfectly with your applique stitch. This one is done in these gorgeous blues and it is so beautiful. Um, let me pull out the, pat, the panel, the center panel. I mean, this is just beautiful. I don't think we've had really any prettier fabrics in here than this group of them. Yes, that's it. Look at that. And you know what is amazing? This isn't a huge quilt. It's only 48 by 65. But once again, we have some of the fabric still from this line. And you could put a couple more borders on this to make it bed size if you wanted to. But I mean, it's just so beautiful. So I wanted to make sure I told you about this one. This kit is only $60. It's super reasonable. You can get this and um, we have it in two different colorways. They're both on our website. The other one is done in a warm color palette. This one is done in your cooler blues and purples. So it's really quite beautiful. And if those, but a lot of us don't, do not have blues or we might love our blues, but we want warm color palette. Well, we have it in a warm color palette too. Very, very gorgeous. And again, a super simple one to put together once you know the trick about doing your circles. The last one I wanna make sure that we don't miss in talking to you about our kits is the Quilt of Valor. And Dave has that right behind him, so I'm gonna let him turn and show you the quilt done in its biggest version. And this quilt is so beautiful. We've got the kit all ready for you. You can make this. There's a free pattern on the We All Sew blog and all the fabrics for this. You see how big it is? Because I'm little and it's bigger than me. <laughs> so it's really a beautiful size. Wouldn't you just love to have this quilt or better yet donate it? So the kit for that, again, it's just the fabric and we have that and we have the link for you to go on to the We All Sew blog and we'll get you that if you choose to purchase this particular kit. And that kit is only $97. We have a bunch of other kits out there. And so I wanna make sure that you knew what we have. If you see a pattern in our mix and you say, Margaret, well, I don't live close to you, but I love that pattern. I'm not sure what the right fabrics are, but I know I want it in blue. Or you say, you know, I'm thinking about doing this quilt. Do you have any suggestions? We can help you with that. We love to do that. One of our favorite things to do is help customers find their fabrics. I went on a Zoom call with one of our customers recently and helped her pick out a lot of fabrics for a project she was doing. We do this all the time, we love to help you. So if you find that you're looking at something and you're just not sure about which fabrics might be appropriate, the clothing one is hard sometimes. Sometimes you look at a pattern and you're like, well, I know I like that color, but then a lot of times what I'll tell folks is look, that's a beautiful color, you're right, that would look great on you, but that fabric's not gonna make you happy when you make that clothing item because it's either too stiff or it's not stiff enough things like that. So we are here to help you have a successful project. 
Don't forget, we have at the end of October, I'm doing the knit t-shirt tunic class. If you haven't taken that class yet, you might really want to think about it. It will show you how to use your regular sewing machine to do knits. And we also are going to have available for the class the ability to use our cover stitch machine and our sergers so that you can try those out in that class setting and be able to do some of the work on those and make it faster for you. And then you can decide if that's something you want to bother with or not. So these are really wonderful skill sets to have. What I try to make sure that you end up with is a pattern that fits you so you can remake it and have success with that. And then that you can go ahead and learn how to do these techniques so that you can transfer it to other kinds of patterns. So knit t-shirt and tunic class happening at the end of October on the 26th. It's gonna be an all day class. Um, I believe it's a Tuesday. So go online and look at our calendar and you'll see it right there. Uh, and again, we're going to be offering some other classes. We've got our beginning sewing class coming up at the middle of the month. And there's going to be some more going on with that. So that is what I've got for you today. Don't forget to shop with us at universityofsewing.com. And if there's anything we can help you with, as you know, you can always email us at info at sewing excuse me, info at universityofsewing.com and our website is universityofsewing.com. 812-323-2665. Don't hesitate to call us. Have a great day, everybody.